Welcome back, everybody, to the Toro Cigar Lounge podcast. I'm your host, Mike Glover. You're going to want to stay tuned today. Today, we're talking about tips for new cigar smokers. We'll be right back. In a world desperate to separate us by our differences, there's still a place where you can go where all are welcome. The Cigar Lounge. Welcome to the Toro Cigar Lounge podcast. And we're back. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Cigar Mike. And today we're talking about tips for new cigar smokers. So you're going to really want to watch this one. To my left is... Hey, I'm Jake, a.k.a. Bearded Cigar Lover. And my right... I'm Ken. uh, Ken Blue Smoke on Instagram. So guys, uh, number one tip. Let's get right into it. Uh, Number one tip for new cigar smokers. Smoke. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. You got it. Don't inhale. Yeah, that's always a good one. You always <laughs> And I will say this though, even as a veteran cigar smoker, every once in a while you'll catch it and get yourself. And it's always funny when somebody does it. Everybody laughs at you. <laughs> but number one tip, this is not a cigarette. Don't inhale. Or if you do it, hey, that's great. We're all gonna laugh at you and you're only gonna do it once. There are some hardcore yeah. MFers that have have built up the tolerance built up the tolerance over time and they actually inhale their cigars but the average person but they're not supposed to be that's not how you're supposed to enjoy a cigar how so what do you do you how do you how do you how do you draw smoke in your mouth move it around get the tasting notes and expel the smoke now so it's a puff a a puff you puff on cigars not inhale cigars there we go now a lot of guys like to retrohale yes i have sinus issues it's impossible for me to retrohale I retrohale. That's more of a uh, an, ad- not an advanced skill, but yeah, a- you got to learn how to do it. It takes right. some learning. It takes but, a little while. But it, I, I, like even today, you guys will you can tell you'll hear me sniffling with my allergies and stuff. It's so hard because I'm always so stuffed up anyway. To just to get a retrohale, I gave up. But let's talk about what cigars you should start with. So the first cigar you should buy and smoke, my opinion is an April Fool's 990 by Lunatic. I'm completely joking. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should smoke a 990. So where the hell is he going with this? this <laughs> so is that not- is not a starter cigar. I've watched guys walk into cigar shops and buy that. A, like they see it and they think bigger is better uh, right, than cigars. Right. And so they buy this giant cigar. But it's all seriousness. If you're gonna, if you're a new cigar smoker and you're like, hey, what should I try? Here's my tip for you. If you're a new cigar smoker or you want to try your first cigar and you're not what, sh- sure what to try. Talk to a friend who smokes cigars regularly. Yep. If you don't have one of those available, go to your local tobacconist, your local cigar shop or lounge, and talk to them. They will walk you through the process of what you should try first. And if you don't have any of that, send us an email, and, and we're happy to talk to you about it. Or you know, and if hit you're us in, up on Instagram, hit DM us up us. on Instagram. Send us a DM. Yep, we'll help you find one. But here's the tip, though. If you're a new cigar smoker and somebody hands you a, a cigar that looks very dark and oily and it's your first cigar, that's probably not for you For you to, as your first cigar. Unless, I'll make the statement, I had met somebody recently that that was their first cigar, but they were a huge steak eater and bourbon drinker. They're used to those very strong, full, rich, robust flavors. Black coffee, Black no coffee creamer. Black coffee drinker, no yeah. creamer. Then you could do maybe get away with that, but most people, what but, I tell everybody, but even then, go with medium strength. Go with a medium strength. What I tell everybody, if you're looking for your first cigar, I tell everybody, look at it like it's chocolate, right? Like you have the 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 Connecticut wrappers, like a light chocolate, then you got a milk chocolate of a Habano, dark chocolate of a Maduro. Stay in that lighter chocolate range, right? Those lighter chocolate knit color browns, because you're probably not going to get something that's going to knock you in the dirt and kick your butt while you're learning to smoke. Right, absolutely. Right, so like a general rule of thumb, one one thing that you hear all the time. It's not it's not always true, but it's a good rule of thumb, and that's the lighter the cigar, the lighter it's probably going to be. Yeah. The milder flavor, the milder tasting notes, the milder peppery notes. Right. So, so you're you're safer picking if you've got a choice the lighter ones, the lighter looking ones in color. Right. And I would say also start relatively small. Don't don't smoke the big Johnny for your first. No, I, I, tell, I think everybody should start, you know, on, well, so, you know, until recently, it's starting to kind of change in the industry, but most cigars are rolled 
for the tasting notes, the flavor notes, the profiles, the quantities of tobacco used are rolled for Robusto. Mm -hmm. So I always tell everybody, um, start with a Robusto because you're getting what that cigar is. Now, a lot of boutique brands and stuff are starting to roll. They know that, in, especially here in the U.S., that Toro is the most popular size. So they're rolling cigars for Toro sized. But that's not enough people to use that as a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is they're rolled for Robustos. That's how it's been for hundreds of years. Start with your Robustos. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very uh, good tip. You know, it's not too big of a cigar. It's not right. too small of a cigar. It's going to fit in most hands, most average hands, fairly well. It looks like a cigarette in this guy's hand, but you know, we we don't judge him for it. Right. The I don't think I would say. Oh, go ahead, Ken. I, uh, I don't think a cigar fitting in your hand is a is a big problem actually, for people. Actually, what's is, really funny actually. is it's actually you'll see people. So you know, there's multiple ways to hold a cigar. So okay, so I smoked cigarettes for 15 years. I gave those up about. 15 years ago so i smoke i hold cigars like i always held cigarettes and i see a lot of guys do this you'll see also a lot of guys hold them like this mm -hmm. in between two fingers you know there's no right or wrong who cares how you hold it if it's comfortable for you in your hand as long and, as long as you don't hold it like this right. <laughs> that, well, that's not gonna and don't work. squeeze it too hard <laughs> <laughs> so the other one is so okay another new cigar tip when you're lighting the cigar the flame off your butane lighter goes a lot further than you can see. Yeah. So don't monkey fuck your cigar. Don't yeah. shove that lighter so deep in there that you're cooking the oils and burning everything down. Yeah. Deep in it. You can light a cigar with a butane lighter from anywhere from six to eight inches away yeah. and get heat. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we'll we'll do another video on that one day. But bottom line is, you're the if you can see the color of your flame, whether it's blue, yellow, orange, green, whatever, if that is touching your tobacco, it's too close. It's too close. Just keep it away, and you'll see your tobacco start to orange up, start start to heat up, start to get turn red. And even though your flame is two to three inches away from the foot of the cigar, and if you use a and, and the, if you use like something other than a single torch, if you're using like a quad torch. You can light, like with my favorite quad torch on the market that I'm going to plug Toro, that Toro has, these Lotus Bronze, they're a quad torch. You can light that cigar from this far away That's if you turn it all the way six, up. Six, eight inches. Yeah. You know, so just yeah. be mindful because it does change the taste of the cigar. If you if you burn the end of that cigar, it will, that entire cigar will be bitter. It's going to be, yeah, it makes it more bitter. So, so watch that. The other one you're going to hear people complain to you about as a new cigar smoker is how to properly cut a cigar. <laughs> and the first thing I'm going to tell you is you paid for the cigar. Cut it however the damn well you please. It's your money. It's your cigar. Light now, it however you please. Light it however you please. It's your money. It's your cigar. But if you want to cut it properly, the goal is to take as little off the cap as possible to open up that cigar. And it takes time. It takes skill. It takes cutting them over and over again. But it's your cigar. As long as you enjoy it, cut it. Right. There's a number of there's a number of techniques. There's a number of cutters. There's a, a, a number of ways to doing it. One of the easiest is the one that we provide with the perfect cutter, and that's that's where pretty much any uh, new cigar smoker can start, yep. and they, you you almost can't screw it up. So you just nip off a bit of the cap, and it's not going to unravel on you. So and that's very convenient. So this cutter actually has a back in it. That prevents the cigar from going too far through through it, so you it's almost impossible to cut too deep on your cigar with this perfect cut, and you just put it in till it reaches the back, and then you clip it, and you're good to go. You're good to go. But it's not usually uh, good for like torpedo shapes and some of the oddball shapes that are out there. It's best for your normally capped cigar. I'm gonna tell you, I hadn't had one of these in a while. This Karen Burger Habano. I forgot how great this cigar is. <laughs> like, you know, because so the problem is, and we all have it, we smoke a lot of cigars. And if you don't circle back and try something again, you'll just move, keep moving down the road. So, you know, so yeah, I'm actually really surprised at how I didn't remember this thing was that great. Yeah, I had a uh, Big Sky Bighorn 2.0 about a week ago, and I hadn't touched one in probably three or four months. Yeah. And I was just blown away by 
man, I forgot how good this cigar is. You get away from it and you just. Right. You, so, but the point is like to that is go back and if you don't like something, go back and try it in six months or yeah. three months. If you like it, that doesn't mean in six months that you're going to still like it. Well, you your know? taste buds change every six months too, right? Yeah. Is it every six months? I think um, it's every seven years. Seven years? I think it's every seven years. Yeah, six months is way fucking off then, Mike. <laughs> but no, so let's see. New cigar smokers. Okay, so the other thing. If you're going to be a new cigar smoker, buy a small humidor. I'm not saying go spend hundreds of dollars online to buy an electric one. Right. Go buy a small travel humidor that will hold 10 or 15 sticks. Right. There's a lot of affordable options out there. And get a Bovita bag in it and keep them at the right humidity so right. you can enjoy a cigar when you want to enjoy a cigar. Right. So in terms of uh, in terms of brands and brand recognition, there are some cigars out there that everybody recognizes. Um, you got your Padrones, and it, 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 you, it, there's a, a number of uh, brands that everybody recognizes, but we don't necessarily carry the, the the biggest name brands. So there's a lot of places where you go into a humidor and there's there's just too much to choose from. So you. You gotta uh, you gotta get a little advice as to what's gonna be a good option for you. Yeah, talk to your tobacconist, right? right. If you walk into a humidor and feel overwhelmed, don't feel bad about that. We still walk into humidors some days and go, "Holy shit!" There's just a lot. Some of the humidors we walk in <laughs> in Virginia Beach are pretty big, pretty nice, pretty nicely stocked. Yeah. You know, but you know, for us now, it's a kid in a candy store. But we'll spend twenty five minutes of our lounge time walking around trying to pick out a cigar. And a lot of times, it's trying to find something that I have that we haven't smoked that's catching our attention. We're like, right. "Oh, let's try this." Right. And you know, or what's new? You know, because we all have our our favorite fallbacks. Right. But yeah, you're always too. looking for something different. And, it, and the other thing is, as you smoke more cigars, you're going to learn what wrapper you like, right? What what binder you like, what fillers you like. Do you like? Dominican cigars versus Nicaraguan cigars or uh, Honduran cigars, you know, do you like certain things? And when you start finding that, go down that rabbit trail, man. Yeah. Go down. Like, if you find a wrapper you like, like, I'm a Cameroon fiend. That's my favorite wrapper on a cigar. I've smoked every Cameroon on the market, and I can I could tell you the top three. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, they're not the most expensive Cameroons on the market. Yeah. So the most expensive Cameroon out there is about $90 a cigar right now. Wow. And I've smoked those. The two best Cameroons, I would say, for the money, and that is not one of them, is The Operator by Hoot and Young is I my heard. number one favorite Cameroon. I like that Cameroon. And Karen Berger actually makes my number two. Karen Berger's Cameroon is... One of the best Cameroons. It's better than anything Fuente has Cameroon. Yeah. At a lot less price. Hmm. So that's another, that's like another pro tip. Yeah. More expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. Not at all. That's for sure across the board. That Whether it's Cameroon or uh, San Andreas or Connecticut Broadleaf or Connecticut's, it doesn't matter. You know, no. your, everybody's palate is different. Our three palates are all different. You know, n- n- the three of us up here, if we had to pick a favorite cigar, you're going to get three different answers, period. And otherwise, we're pretty similar, right? We have right. a lot of similar interests. And t- we like steak. We like bourbon. Ken likes his, uh, you know, uh, sangria, fruity cocktail wines. Very fancy drink. Very fancy. I'm very and, sophisticated. <laughs> you know, uh, but it just goes to show you that you can have very similar taste outside of cigars and then you get into the world of cigars and everybody's going to have something different but the the pro tip that i'm going to leave you with is experiment try different things don't get locked into you pick up a cigar you 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 smoke one okay now that's all you smoke for the rest of your life because you found one that you liked and mike experiments a lot he's a big experimenter just want to leave that there (laughs) i I, I, I was gonna say another another pro tip. This is another thing that you guys do well, is sample packs. Mm. Oh yeah, buy a sample pack. Get four. Like find something that you might like one or two. Like you know you like one or two of the cigars or one of the two types of cigars in there, and there's three questionable cigars. Here's the catch: smoke them. You might find something that you never thought you would like because of a sample pack. Right. You know, and I mean, I pick on. 
GTO, you know, I've given talk to Doc a lot. You know, the um, hypnotic that Doc has. The sweet tip. It's a sweet tip. I thought sweet tips were the silliest thing. I've tried them before. But you know what? I found one I actually liked. I mean, I honestly thought they were more in line with new cigar smokers or... They are. They're definitely in line with new cigar smokers. It's a recommended cigar for new cigar smokers. It's right. A, it's a great way to start. Yeah. Well, and that's so that's the thing. Find something you like, buy sample packs, try new stuff. Now, like Mike touched on though, we all have different taste buds. So so here's the science behind that. Eighty percent of taste is memory driven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've all eaten different foods. We've all had different life experiences. Everybody watching this has had different life experiences. So take tasty notes with a grain of salt. If you see a cigar, like, and I'm going to use a cigar you guys don't have, but it's a cigar everybody knows, mm-hmm. a Padron 26. Yeah. Okay. I don't think new cigar smokers know a Padron 26. No, but I think it's a cigar that most people know in most shops. A lot of shops have it. Right. If a new cigar smoker walked and said, hey, I want a Padron 26, that cigar, honestly, is not a bad cigar for someone that hasn't smoked a lot of cigars to try if they want to try a more expensive cigar. Ooh, ooh man, you're you're. <laughs> but I, I think Jake's right because the first Padron I ever tried was like no. Uh, I mean, but I had only had a few. I'm sorry. Let yeah. me break in just for a moment, yeah. and I'll get back to you. That just had a few cigars. I was a new cigar smoker. I had a Padron. It was completely different experience. Yep. But back to Jake. But so, the, but the thing with that cigar, so my neighbor who doesn't smoke cigars, after he had his surgeries and everything for his brain tumor. He wanted to sit months later, not close to it. So I don't want people going, oh, you shouldn't smoke cigars. after." Surgery. We're talking six, eight months later. I gave him one. We're sitting having a celebratory cigar with his dad. I broke out 26s. He calls that cigar the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup of cigars. Because hmm. when he smokes it, he swears all he tastes is dark cocoa notes and, and peanut butter. Yep. Right? Now, his dad didn't have that same experience. Right? So, but again, tasting notes are subjective to the person smoking it right right so that's something else if you go look online and you see a cigar that has a tasting note and you get it and you don't taste it that's not that the cigar didn't have it it's that the way your brain's wired didn't pick it up well a lot of to your point jake earlier when you said you know uh taste and flavor 80 percent memory right it's you know out of the remaining 20 percent 10% 10% is probably environment. Right. Who are you smoking it with? Where are you smoking it? How what? are you smoking it? What are you drinking with what it? What have you eaten today? What have you eaten today? What did yeah. you eat yesterday? There's a there's a tremendous amount that goes into it. Yeah. So if you don't like something today, all that to say, if you don't like something today, don't be afraid to try it again in a couple of months. And there's another thing for beginners is the tasting notes are very subtle. It takes it takes a while yes. before you even start to pick up on what yeah. people are actually getting. So your first few cigars, even though they'd be completely different, could taste almost exactly the same to you because you just don't have that frame of reference. Right. right. And and the other one is I'll bring up one tasting note, just and two tasting notes in general that you hear the most. That you that I think you know, that I think we hear probably the most. Creamy and peppery. Yeah. Are probably the two most tasting notes. So peppery is literally black pepper is it spicy on your palate there's white pepper there's white pepper but a lot of people don't notice the difference a lot of people say it's peppery yeah and it's it's either you know and that right. that could be red pepper white pepper black pepper but a, a, a strong peppery cigar is going to have that spicier taste that spicy leave that spicier taste in your mouth creamy is actually not a tasty note as much as the experience with a cigar right so if you get a very creamy cigar and you're smoking it, you get those great big plumes of smoke that look really cool for photos. Those and, are actually considered creamier cigars. And no harsh, peppery taste right. in your mouth with that. So right. you, you draw, I mean, I could, I could, I remember to this day, I can I visually, physically go back there in my mind. The first uh, Padron 1964 anniversary I had. Yep. And the, and, and, and I've explained this to Ken a hundred times. There's no other way to describe it except creaminess it right. was like it was it was like eating cake frosting without the sweetness it was just creamy and there's just no other way to describe it and well one what... one way i've heard a manufacturer describe creaminess was if it makes your your palate salivate 
Right. If when you're smoking oh. a cigar and it makes your palate salivate, you you mentally uh, take that in as creamy. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know how true I that think, is, but it sounds right. To I me. think I think I salivated that day. <laughs> <laughs> so can we get some practical tips? Because as a new cigar okay. smoker, I uh, you know you okay. see you see some stuff ashing. You can do that wrong. You can mess up your cigar. So a, c- a cigar is not a cigarette. So you don't have to smash it, right? If you now, I am not good enough to grow the really cool long ash that you see on social media. A lot of these guys do. He's so, a rookie. So when I get close, I just reach over and lightly tap the tip of the ash. The ash falls in, and I go back to smoking. Yep. Right? And you don't have to sit there and grind it. You don't have to sit there and grind it trying to get rid of it. Right. It should just be a nice, light little tap. The ash falls off. You're back to smoking. So I, I don't know where I picked this up from. I think it was probably from one of the other podcasts I listen to on a regular basis. But I'll also go in, and I'll take the tip of my cigar that's got a little ash on it, and I'll put the edge of it right against the side of the ashtray and just gently roll it until it falls off. Now, recently I've heard that's an improper way to do that. The tapping is the best way to do it. But that's a nice clean ash right there. Right. So I, I find that hard to complain so about. The other one is, so I'll give you another tip. When the cigar gets down and gets hot on your lips, it's over. All right, but right. before we, we talk okay. about when to when to finish when to, it, okay. I, I want to do the third ashing that is a very common way to ash, and that's to not pay attention to your cigar <laughs> and have it fall into your lap and then burn your crotch, and then you got to sweep it off in front of everybody. <laughs> if you're in a lounge, <laughs> that's one of the most embarrassing things. So, <laughs> People keep an eye out, and you see someone's ash roll down the front of their chest and yeah. just like, you know, splash. It's really bad if you're wearing all black too. Yeah. If you wear black or navy, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. So then, but I, but when do you when do you put the thing out? So technically, by if you go do the whole cigar sommelier thing and learn, when it gets hot on your lips, it's time to put the cigar down. Now I didn't understand the science behind this until I talked to Doc that owns GTO. Right. And the reason is there's actually a scientific reason behind it. So there's two main nerves that control your tongue that send the signals to your brain for taste. You can burn those out. So that's why you see cigarette smokers a lot. They start with, you know, when they first start smoking cigarettes, what are they smoking? Light cigarettes. Then they eventually have to move to a stronger cigarette so they can taste it. So they go to full flavor. Then they go to eventually to menthols, right? Because they want to be able to taste something. So... That the reason that's happening, and I'm using that as an example, is that's actually burning out those nerves, hmm. right now. So with cigars, you can do the same thing. If you smoke, if you wake up in the morning and all you do is smoke full-bodied, full-flavored cigars, you can actually burn those out also. Hmm. So the guys in the Dominican, the guys in Nicaragua, the, the old Cubans down in Miami and in Cuba that smoke cigars, they'll tell you you smoke cigar light cigars in the morning. Light colored cigars in the morning, medium colored cigars in the afternoon, and then treat yourself to dark cigars after dinner. Because that way you're never hitting yourself so hard that you're burning right. your palate out. But the flip side of that, you can also burn your palate out with Habanos or with Connecticut's. Once they get hot on your lips, the cigar's done. And a good cigar shouldn't get hot on your lips till it has two inches, one to two inches left. You know, you're talking about half of that bottom third is when it gets hot. And when it gets hot, you don't have to smash it out. Um, in the Dominican, they'll say, let them die with dignity. Let them die with dignity. And man. all you do is set the cigar down. You don't throw it in the bowl. I mean, you, if it's a big ashtray and there's room, you can set it down in there. But most of the time, you just set your cigar down, finish it, if you want to, and then light the next one. If yeah. you want another cigar. It'll go out it'll, on its own. It'll go out in the next two to three minutes on its own. <clears throat> and once it's out, bump it in the bowl. But if it's hot on the lips, it's too hot to smoke. Right. But whatever you do, don't take it like a cigarette and mash it into the ashtray. Uh, especially, I mean, if you're at home, hey, do whatever you want. It's your cigar, do whatever right. you want. Do whatever okay? you want. It's your money. It's your cigar. Do whatever you want. But if you're in a lounge or you're around other cigar smokers, please don't do that because it does set up a plume of, of, of an an acidic smell. Very, yeah, very acidic. Bitter. Very, very bitter, bitter and smell. acidic. And the whole lounge will smell it and they'll start looking around and they'll see you over there. 
mashing your Grinding cigar. You know? Who's yeah. the noob? <laughs> yep. Who's the noob? But yeah, right. so you know, let them die with dignity. The other one is, so I would say that's a good tip. I got I got one more uh, okay. <clears throat> subject matter, and this is for new cigar smokers. And if you're married, you have to deal with your other half <laughs> when you come home and you you smell like an ashtray, or if you smell wonderful like a very expensive cigar or whatever, they might not appreciate any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty common. It's pretty common that the person who who if if you're in a in a relationship, if they don't smoke. They might not like that smell. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta deal with that. I deal with it most of the time. If I don't want to strip down and shower up immediately, I keep a bottle of Febreze uh, by the back door. I kind of hose myself off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't have that problem. My wife smokes cigars. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think everybody's uh, situation is different. I know Ken's is different. Than mine, which is different than Jake's. And honestly, if you look at it on a scale, Ken probably has the most sensitive uh, partner uh, in life with him that is very sensitive to you know how he smells after cigar smoker. My wife uh, picks up on it, but is not you know horrified by it uh, unless I'm like trying to kiss her or something like that right at, right a after a cigar. Um, but you know, for the most part, I don't have to hose down when I enter the house. And then you have Jake, whose wife will sit out in a garage and have a cigar with him. So it just depends on or your situation. Or she'll walk up and take my cigar out of my hand to try the one I'm smoking <laughs> to see if she likes that one. So, yeah. Oh, Morgan, we got to talk. Yeah, she, she'll walk and be like, I'll be sitting there like this or... You know, when I'm sitting work and I'll have it sitting on a rest, and she'll just walk up and pick it up and try it. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I, you know what? It don't bother that. me at all. There's nothing but, wrong with that. But no, but the, I mean, when it comes to cigars, though, enjoy them, try them, smoke different stuff. Price is not the the tell all. The tell all price does not mean a better cigar. Uh, you know, I would tell everybody you should be able to find great. I'm not even. I, I will tell you for sure. You can find great cigars under fifteen dollars. You can find great cigars under ten dollars. Mm. So I got one last tip for new cigar smokers from me necessarily in my in my mind, and that is when you start smoking, give yourself thirty minutes to an hour where you don't have anything to do. So if you're trying to work and smoke a cigar at the same time, it's a big distraction. It's it's a you know it's not you can't really experience it. So if you're a new cigar smoker. Just let that be the activity that you're doing. You give yourself 30 minutes to an hour or, or just until you, you start to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. Even if you're halfway done, that's fine. Yeah. You've experienced that first half. Maybe in a little while, a couple of days, you try a different cigar. So I'll, I'll hit that on the first. If you're done, you're done. A lot of new cigar smokers, too, will light something that's too strong for them. They get an upset stomach. Mm. Spoonful of sugar will actually fix the upset stomach. So you, you have to, have to, you you have have to sing with, the song too. Right. You have to sing the song too. <clears throat> but the spoonful of sugar will actually fix the upset stomach so you can go on the rest of your day and not feel right. ugly in the guts. Right. Strong cigars do have nicotine in it. You are absorbing <sighs> the nicotine not through the smoke in your lungs, but through your mouth, your lips, and the smoke that enters your mouth. So you are absorbing the nicotine, and you can develop nicotine sickness if you're not used to it, if you haven't built up a good, <clears throat> tolerable uh, level. So if you do start to feel that way, a piece of candy, yep. a little bit of sugar, a sweet soda um, or, or sweet tea, something with sugar something in with it, sugar. Yep. will offset that very quickly, and you'll go right back to normal. Yep. That's all I got. What else? Anything else? You got nothing on the table. So try it. Like, I, you know, let me reiterate Ken's thought. You know, cigar smoking is is about taking time for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. It's about, especially in the beginning, take the time for yourself. Use that half hour or that hour a day. And that's really one of the main reasons why I fell in love with cigars is I would come home after a day in corporate America, stressful as hell. Go outside on the front porch or swing or the back porch. Ken may, might come over one one time, you know, or not. But it would just be that time for me to just sit there, 
maybe have a drink and a cigar, a bourbon, a, a whiskey, um, and have a cigar and just let the day melt away. It's a time for re- relaxation, reflection of the day, of life, of whatever you want it to be, but take that time for yourself. I think men in general have gotten away from that Yes. in today's society, right? You get up, you go to work, and and you work all day, you come home, you you've you, it's busy. You've got dinner to worry about, you got your wife to worry about, you got the kids to worry about, you got the dog to worry about, <laughs> and and you're trying to get ready for the next day, and by the time it's all said and done, you haven't taken time for yourself. This is a good reason to give you time for yourself. Get away. Give yourself some time. Give yourself some time. So let's um, <clears throat> let's uh, let's let's activate our, our, our audience a little bit and say, uh, do do we have audience member um, tips that they can put in the comments or whatever? New smoker, new cigar smoker tips. Did we miss something in the comments? What did we miss? What did we miss? What did we miss? What do you think we should? T- what, what do you think we should have done? Yeah. And, and if you are a new cigar smoker and you take any of these tips and they worked for you, let, let us, us know. know. Let us know. That'd hey, I'll great. one up it. Let's have a one up day. Oh boy, here we go. No, no, no. So I don't know when I don't know when this is going to get posted. Right? Ken will figure that out. That's Ken's problem, not mine. <laughs> From the time this is posted for the next two weeks, best cigar, best new smoker cigar tip contest. Okay. You have to comment. At the end of two weeks, we'll pick the best tip, and you'll get a mystery five pack on me. What? There you go. There. Shazam. <laughs> best new smoker tip that we did not cover. <laughs> comment. Fourteen that, days after this post. That's a good. Co- that's a good. That's a good mystery five comment. pack. Mystery five pack. Mystery, mystery five. five pack. It's gonna be a new cigar <laughs> smoker five pack. Mystery five pack. Mystery five packs. It could be anything. Watch could out. Be, could be whatever I feel like at the moment when I when I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> what I will promise you is it will be five fabulous, fantastic, amazing cigars from Toro Cigar Company. There you go. On my dime. Okay, guys. Well, this is a this was a great episode. It's a great conversation. So let's wrap it up with this. Um, if you like this episode, please like, follow, share, or comment below. That's how we beat the YouTube algorithm. We're already talking about tobacco, so we're already up against the rails when it comes to YouTube. So if you like this video, please like, comment, and share down below. Help us beat the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget, we carry a lot of great cigars in the Toro Cigar Company uh, humidor and we're happy to help new cigar smokers or experienced cigar smokers walk through their first pick from our humidor so reach out to us on social media dm any one of the three of us dm toro cigar company send us an email from the website or fill out the little form on the website and we will help you as quickly as we can get right back to you and provide some suggestions for your cigar smoking journey and with that we're going to say good night Have a great day. Have a great week, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.